We thank God for yet another wonderful day and opportunity for us to come steady and also equip ourselves for the service of the Lord. You all welcome on board and then we share a word of prayer together. Father, we thank you for another wonderful time. We ask that you be with us, grant us understanding into your word in Jesus' name. Amen. So, you are welcome once again. We will go straight to our lesson for the day. And today, by the grace of God, we are going to look at the divided kingdom. Yesterday, we were able to finish with the United Kingdom of Israel. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> so we go to the United Kingdom today at the divided kingdom. What happened? That the kingdom was divided. We are going to look at it today. And it's my prayer that we all will participate greatly and then we'll learn from it. Okay. So we move straight. We got to know yesterday that the kingdom was, the, was united under um, under the rule of Solomon. It all started from Saul, then came into David, and David passed it on to Solomon. From Saul to David, it was God who removed Saul and placed David as king. This time around, it was David who anointed his own son, or who enthroned his son to become the next king. After the prophet Nathan, and Bathsheba had brought her mind, his mind to the fact that he had promised to make Jonathan uh, Solomon the next king. So Solomon took over. We were told the number of things that happened during Solomon's reign. And then the prophet Ahijah prophesying that the kingdom was going to be divided after Solomon, where 10 of the kingdom, 10 of the tribes will be for Jeroboam who was then an administrator under Solomon's reign. And then the other two will be given to Rehoboam, who is a son of Solomon. So we move on from there. What happened? This kingdom was united. So how did this prophecy come to pass? The prophet Ahijah's prophecy. So rebellion after the death of Solomon resulted in the division of the United Kingdom. Now, we got to know that 10 tribes was established under Jeroboam with Samaria as their capital. So 10 tribes, as the prophet Ahijah prophesied, went to one side to form the, what we say, the nation of Israel. They used the name Israel. Whilst, and now they were in the Northern Kingdom. So they were really in the Northern Kingdom. They formed the the, 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 the nation called Israel. And then they used Samaria as their capital and Jeroboam was their king. Now beyond the Northern Kingdom too, getting to the Northeast where Syria and Amaria, where David had conquered, David conquered all those areas. They also gained independence under the leadership of reason. And then they made Damascus their capital. So aside the Northern Kingdom going, the other sites that David conquered, Syrian and the Amerians, they also break forth, declaring independent and the reason. And then they made Damascus their capital. Rehoboam, who is the son of Solomon, retained only the tribes of Judah and part of the tribe of Benjamin and Simeon. So it was like the the tribe of Benjamin and Simeon, part of them came together to become one tribe and adding up to that of Judah for him to rule. So they continue to make Jerusalem as their capital. So the division, what brought about all this division that we are talking about? Following the death of Solomon, Rehoboam, his son, called for the assembly of the nation at Sisham. Now, Jeroboam, who was a distinguished administrator under Solomon, 
while he, he was in charge of supervising the construction of the wall of Jerusalem, you know, received a message from the prophet Ahijah that he will rule. So he started showing signs of rebellion. And then Solomon was not happy with him, so had wanted to even kill him. You know, Solomon, he killed all those who could threaten the power. He killed his own brother Adonijah, and then make sure that Joab was killed. And all those Abitai was a priest, he made sure that he consolidated the power. So Jeroboam ran away from the, from the land. But when he heard that Solomon had died, he came back. And then the people said that he should lead them into the assembly. So he was also invited. And once they met, he presented before them, before Solomon, uh, Rehoboam, that your father was our king. He made us pay so many taxes here and there. And because there were so much taxes for us to pay, we have suffered a lot. And therefore we beg of you to reduce the taxes and the burden on us. If you do that, we will agree to make you our king. Oh, it was a good idea. Rehoboam took it, went to consult his father's elders, the council that was with his father. They advised him that yes, this is a good thing for you to do. The people have suffered a lot. Yes, your father wanted to build the cities. He wanted to build a temple, he wanted to build a palace. He really traded and therefore there was so much coming to the us because he had divided the whole nation into 12 districts and he has appointed people in charge. Therefore they were taking so much taxes from them. So reduce their burden and for them to be free a little, be our own people. Well, Abraham listened to the advice and decided to consult his own peers, the boys' boys and the girls' girls. And the boys' boys and the girls' girls say, hey, my brother, don't go and tell them that um, you agree to it. Tell them that your finger, your little figure is, is bigger than that of your father. Even your, your, your sandals you were bigger than that, than that of your father. Therefore, whatever they were incurring under the leadership of your father, you are going to double it up. And then, I don't know whether to use the word foolishly, but let me just be cautious. Rehoboam took the advice of, the, of his fellow age mate, his peers, and then told them that he was not going to budge. And because of that, the people decided to split from him. Now, it's important for us to know that during the time they were paying their taxes, Judah was not paying some. And Judah is a tribe of David, where Solomon also came from, Rehoboam also came from. So it became to them, the people realized that no, these people, they are only concerned about themselves. They are not making the people pay the taxes. We should be paying. And then when we have enough for, for reduction, they are not ready to listen. And therefore they decided to go. Another reason that made them also to go is that they also realized that um, the kingdom had been started with, uh, the kingdom started with Saul. And so it should have been the dynasty of Saul, the people of Saul, the royal family of Saul, that should have been taken over. But David came from nowhere, took over the kingdom, and then he successfully handed over to his own son, Solomon. And Solomon, after the death of Solomon, it is also going to his son, Rehoboam. That means that they have established themselves. So those who belong to the South faction also find it that no, we have to start all over. And so they left and went away. It's important for us to note that after the death of Saul, Isboset, who was the son of Saul, was placed on the throne for two years. I, rem I hope you do remember yesterday we talked about it before David came on to take over. So they decided to go and then um, have Jeroboam, who had been promised to be a king, take over from them. So the kingdom of was split into two, the northern kingdom, and then the southern kingdom. So let's take one after the other. Let's look at the southern kingdom. 
the Saiyan Kino was led by Jeroboam, uh, Rehoboam. The name Jeroboam and Rehoboam sometimes confuses, so you have to get it right. The Saiyan Kino was led by Rehoboam, who was the son of Solomon and the grandson of David. So the remaining tribe, as I said, Judah and part of Benjamin and Simeon came together to form the Southern Kingdom. Now they were sometimes called Judah. Usually that's a name given to the Southern Kingdom. They are, some, they are usually called Judah. And as I said, they had their capital in Jerusalem. In all, there were 19 kings and queens. At a point in time, there was a queen that ruled there. Who ruled in the southern kingdom of Judah. These kings were from uh, the, um, the dynasty of David. Now, not all of them, about eight of them were good in the sight of God, and later Assyria and or Uziah, or Joash, or Joash, who were also from the same tribe, did evil in the sight of God. Now, the Judah experienced periods of greatness, especially during the period of Asa, Joas, Hezekiah, and Josiah. When they were king, there was so much greatness in there. Now, I'm discussing that today we'll be looking so much into the various kings that are ruled. So let us also uh, get ourselves prepared because we'll be talking more about the various kings that ruled. We, the, what we are doing covers even up to a long range where we'll get to the prophets. So let's follow as such. The southern kingdom, as we said, occasionally were threatened by Egypt, Syria, and sometimes even the northern kingdom, that's Israel. Now, later on, they became slaves to Assyria. The Assyrians captured them. But the Assyrians were also being captured by, by the Babylonians, where we have Nebuchadnezzar coming in. So they defeated the Assyrians. Therefore, the southern kingdom, which is Judah, became part of them. They took hold of that place too as well. Therefore, we get to know about the story of uh, Jeremiah talking about you going back. We talk about even Daniel, all of them were part of the Judean system, and then they were captured by the Babylons or the Babylonians. The temple and the walls of Jerusalem with some buildings were destroyed and Jerusalem became a desolate city. So when we get to Lamentations chapter one, verse 11, down was we get to know that the temple that Solomon built was destroyed. And then the whole city of Jerusalem was also destroyed. So that's how far they fell. Now let's look at the various kings that ruled in Judah, or what we call the Southern Kingdom. We start with Jeroboam. Jeroboam ruled, he was the grandson of David and the son of Solomon. So the moment the kingdom were divided into two, the first king for the Southern Kingdom, or what we call the Judah, was Jeroboam. And Rehoboam. Rehoboam ruled for 17 years. The account of Rehoboam can be found in 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 42 to chapter 14, verse 31. That is the reign of Rehoboam. Now let's look at some of the remarkable things that happened in the time of Rehoboam. Let's look at some of the things that happened in the time of Rehoboam. We get to know that the, the main division was caused by Rehoboam, and that was the immediate causes, those writing the Trinity for immediate causes, his refusal to listen to the advice of the king when the people pleaded was the main reason why the whole kingdom got splitted. Now, after the split, Rehoboam made plans to surprise the Israelites, those who have rebelled against, against him. Yes, so the immediate causes, as I said, we have to, let me just go over the immediate causes. As I said, these are the, the immediate causes that led to the division. 
that is the assembly as session. As I said, the people had gathered, they brought their petition before him, before they make him king, Rehoboam. They were led by Jeroboam who had, re who had rebelled and then has been promised to take over the kingdom from Solomon, 10 tribes. And whilst the people brought their case before uh, Rehoboam, he decided to consult both the elders and his peers. And he took the advice of his peers rather than the advice of his elders. And this brought about the division. So this, uh, the, this was the immediate cause of the, uh, of the divided kingdom. And we have given the scope and the length of the divided kingdom. So Jeroboam, Rehoboam took over from his father. 17 years he reigned. But as soon as the kingdom was divided, he made plans that he would fight the Israel. The, the northern kingdom was called the Israel. They took the name Israel. But when he called the troops, he only got the, his, only his tribes, the tribe of Judah and Benjamin responding to support him to fight. But you know, there was a prophet called Shimiel, Shimael. And this prophet advised Rehoboam not to fight against and the other tribe. In the early, early years of his reign, for instance, Rehoboam was further humbled by the invasion that took uh, by the people of Egypt. At a point in time, he has to fight, and then Egypt kept on worrying him, raiding Jerusalem, and then taking uh, some of the treasures from the temple. Although he began his reign sincerely, uh, being a sincere, religious, devoted man, he soon succumbed to the prevailing idolatrous influence. Now, we get to know that his 17 year reign um, was full at a point with so many issues where he went into, led the people into apostasy and adultery. Rehoboam was succeeded by his own son, Abijah. Abijah. Now, Abijah ruled for only three years. Only three years. And he was also being told by the prophet Ido, warn him severally of his sinful ways. And then Abijah also died off. Now, after Abijah, there came Asa. Asa ruled for 41 years. If you look at the whole list, it is only Manasseh that ruled for 55 years, followed by Uziah, who ruled King Uziah, who ruled for 52 years. Then after that, you come to Asa, who ruled for 41 years. So if you look at the number of years that the various kings of Judah ruled, Asa comes dead as the longest ruler of Judah. Now, Asa, as compared to the previous um, leaders who had come, was a more religious person who came with revival. He began a, a program of reform admonishing the people to keep the law of Moses. Now, when he was attacked by the Ethiopians for the side, from the south, for instance, and this one I'm saying, I'm just giving a summary of First Kings chapter 15, verse eight to 24. That is where we find the story of Asa. So you can go over on your own, but I'm giving summary of all of them. So Asa, when he was even attacked from the, by the people of the Ethiopians, for instance, from the south, now he sorted for divine aid. He went to God and then he admonished, has been admonished by the prophet um, Azaria. Asa removed all idols that were in the land. He crushed them, he burned the image of the various gods that have been found in the Valley of Kidron, and then you move the Micah, the, the, the 
as queen mother. Michael was the, the daughter of Saul, whom um, David married. He even removed him as queen mother because he felt that she was also pushing for the worship of idols in the town. And then when the religious celebration in um, Jerusalem attracted people from the Northern Kingdom, there was another king, we'll talk about Basha, the other side. They all came because they felt like in Israel, uh, the Judans were pushing to God. So this guy did all he can to instill the worship of God back into the people. However, unfortunately for him, um, Asa did not respond favorable to God's warning when he was being warned by the prophet Hanani about his alliance with the Syrians. He did not heed to it. And then he did even imprison the prophet at a point. So two years before his death, Asa was struck by a fatal disease. He was struck down by a disease and two years later, he died. I will plead that if you have questions, you, put, you let me know because there are a lot. So I'm trying to move faster. Jehoshaphat took over from his father, Asa. He reigned for 25 years. And then his account can be seen from 1 Kings chapter 22, verse 14, 41 to 50. 25 years he ruled. Now, his reign was one of the most encouraging and helpful era, era in the religious history of Judah. Since Jehoshaphat was 35, old, 35 years old when he began to reign, he very likely had come under the influence of the Judean's greatest leaders during the early years of his life. So when he started to rule, he was already 35 years old. So he had a pre-influence of what had happened before. At least he knew some of the things of old. So he had a little experience. Now, so under a was organized program, he sent princes, priests, and then the Levites throughout the land to teach the people the law. That was the remarkable thing about Jehoshaphat. He, intense, he did this intentionally. And therefore, there was peace in the land. His mind was that teach the people the law, the law and make sure that they understand the things that are happening. Now, when he was threatened by the invasion of the Moabites and the Edomites from the Southeast area. Um, he also did his best to go to God in prayer and then seek the face of God to be able to help him fight. So he was one person who did his best to pull the people to God. Now, he also, aside all these things that he did, he also, within the three days, he led his people to victory and brought them back to Jerusalem. Now, the fear of God was now around the whole nation. Along the line, he also died as king. And then another one took over from him. And the person who took over from him was also his son, Joram, or uh, Jehi, Jehoram, took over from him. He also did his best to continue what the Lord has, his, what his father had started earlier. So he reigned for eight years. He reigned for eight years. And then his account can also be seen in 2 Kings chapter 8, verse 16 to 24. I think it's quite short. We can quickly just try to read it. And then 
2 Kings chapter 8, verse 16 to 24. 2 Kings chapter 8, verse 16 to 24. 2 Kings chapter 8, verse 16 to 24. So we, we take it and read. If you've opened it to you, can start reading for us. Second Kings chapter two, chapter eight, verse 16 to 24. Okay. So we read from here. Second Kings chapter eight, verse 16 to 24. So we read. Now Jehiram, son of King Jehoshaphat of Judah, began to rule over Judah in the fifth year of the reign of Joram, son of Ahab, king of Israel. Jehoram was 32 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem eight years. So he became king at the age of 32 years and reigned for eight years. But Je Je Jehoram followed the example of the kings of Israel and was as wicked as King Ahab, for he had married one of Ahab's daughters. So Jehoram did what was evil in the sight of God. So despite the fact that he inherited from his father, Jehoshaphat, who was doing well, he did the otherwise followed the king of Ahab, who was ruling in the northern kingdom, took his wife or a, um, one of his daughters as a wife. And that daughter influenced him so much that he did evil. But the Lord did not want to destroy Judah, for he had promised his servant David that his descendants will continue to rule. So that means that the Lord was still with them and decided not to destroy them. During Jeho Je Jehoram's reign, the Edomites revolted against Judah and crowned their own king. So those who were under them moved. So Jehoram went with all his chariots to attack the town of Zia. The Edomites surrounded him and his chariot commanders, but he went out at night and attacked them under cover of darkness. But Jehoram's army deserted him and flew to their homes. So Edom has been independent from Judah to this day. The town of Liban also reverted about that same time. The rest of the event in Jehoram's reign and everything he did are recorded in the books of the history of the kings of Judah. When Jehoram died, he was buried with his ancestors in the city of David. Then his son Ahaziah became the next king. So Ahaziah, also took from his father, uh, Jehoram. Ahaziah, son of Jehoram, began to rule over Judah in the um, 12th year of the reign of Joram, son of Ahab, king of Israel. Ahaziah was 22 years old when he became king and reigned in Judah one year. So he became king and reigned for only one year. Now, his mother was Atalia, a granddaughter of king of Emre of Israel, who come to the kings in Israel. Ahaziah followed the evil example of kings, King Ahab's family. He did what was in evil in the sight of God, just as Ahab's family had done, for he was related by marriage to the family of Ahab. Let's note that his mother was what? from there, so we have to note it. So Ahaziah joined uh, Joram, son of Ahab, in his war against King Haziah of Aram. Now, when he returned to Jezreel to recover from the wounds he had received at uh, Ramoth, because jo Joram was wounded, King Ahaziah of Judah went to Joram to visit him. So later, he also died from 
He also died afterwards. And then the continuation, it continues. Another person took over. Now, when he died, we get to know that Atalia was there. If you quite remember, we can, we, 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 the name was mentioned here that his mother was Atalia, the granddaughter of, so when he died, his mother took over the reign, became the next king, a uh, queen of Judah. She reigned for six solid years. Six years she reigned as queen of Judah. Now, when after that era, another one took over from him, from her, and it was Jewish. Now, who was this gentleman? He reigned for 40 years, the fourth longest person to reign. Joash. Joash was the next king. Joash reigned for all this year. Now, let's also get to know what happened to this gentleman. He was also threatened by the Azarians. And then to take over from him. Now, he also succumbed to the Azarians by allowing them to invade the temple of Jerusalem, taking everything or all the treasures that were left there. It is very important for us to know that Joash was wounded later on when he went into war. And the judgment came upon him for allowing himself to be used by the other gods and to allow the people of Azaria come to take up the treasures. So he was also punished and then he died. Amasia took over from him. He also ran for 29 good years. Amasia is credited with a total of 29 good years, as I said. He actually ruled one, one area, one of the shortest period because he will have done more. Now, later he was, his son Uziah took over from him. So at a point in time, he was also, he was really was, his son was also handling most other, other aspects of the kingdom. When his son took over, it was another golden era for Israel. His son, Uziah, was one of the people who also brought, uh, broke the peace that, sorry, Uziah was one of the people who also made Israel go into serious trouble. He couldn't sustain the kingdom and then took them into another era where they had to suffer, go into apostasy. He broke the peace that existed between Judah and Israel, where he made the southern kingdom go into war with the northern kingdom. Now, we get to know that Uziah initiated policies that brought about the restoration of Israel later, of Judah later. Very likely, he rebuilt the walls of Jerusalem which we, are pre we presuppose. He also did his best with military programs and he was ready to even fight the Philistines, the Idromites and the Amorites, where he won and brought them under his control. The U.S. prosperity was directly related to his uh, dependence upon God at a point in time. According to 2 Chronicles chapter 26, Verse five and seven. Zachariah, a prophet, effectively instructed the king. He was with him at the point in time to make sure that he followed 
what was right. Uziah also earned another reign where Jotham took over. Jotham also ruled for 18 years. And the same issue came up. He was with God, took the people to God at a point in time, continuing the problem that, uh, continuing the progress of Uziah uh, when he had gone off. And then he rebuilt the, the nation, Judah. Jotham took over from there. But along the line, the same apostasy steps in, and then the people were handed to Ahaz. We get to know that Ahaz also ruled for 19 years, and then Hezekiah came to be. Hezekiah also came in, ruled, and then Manasseh came in. Manasseh ruled for 55 years. Ammon came with two years. Josiah came with 31 years. Johol, uh, Johas, Johas came with nine months, uh, uh, three months rule. And then Johar came 11 months. Johar came three months. Johar came rule for 11 years. Johar came three months. And uh, Zedekiah, 11 years again. This gives us a total of what happened in the reign of the Judah. We may not be able to go to every account of each of them because um, they all have a long period. And this is about 19, um, 19 kings that ruled. So out of the 19 kings, we have 19 kings that had ruled in this era. 19 kings that ruled, okay. Let's move to the Northern Kingdom. I will pause for questions because details, reading every, trying to summarize everyone will take too much time. So if there are questions here, however, I will ask that just as we have it here, let's take our time to be just reading the account per account, the various accounts that took place to help us know all that happened. Any question at this point? before we move on to the Northern Kingdom. Okay, so the Northern Kingdom, the Northern Kingdom was sometimes called Ephraim, Israel or Samaria. This, the same name where you see Ephraim, is still me, the Northern Kingdom, Samaria, the Northern Kingdom or Israel is the Northern Kingdom. Now, these people were, those who were many, the 10 tribes of Israel. They made Samaria their capital. Previously, it was Sishem and Tiza. Tiza was their capital or Sishem, but they changed it to Samaria. Now, there were 19 kings in all, but the point is that unlike the southern kingdom, where all of them were from the tribe, where well, all of them were from the tribe. You know, the dynasty of David, they all came from the descendants of David. This one, it was like kingdoms on its own. People rise up. They did, it didn't follow that from the Jehoboam's kingdom lineage. It was, let's say, overthrown upon overthrown. Someone comes in, overthrown, then there was a coup, you take over, you take over, that's all happened. So if you look at them, there were 14 dynasties that were founded, that we can found within these 19 kings that reign. Now the first dynasty has to do with the dynasty of Jeroboam. And the dynasty of Jeroboam, we get that come from 1 Kings chapter 12 to chapter 15. We get the dynasty of Basha, from 1 Kings chapter 12, uh, chapter 15 to that of 16. We have the dynasty of Omri. That takes us up from 1 Kings chapter 16 to chapter 22 and continue from 2 Kings chapter 1 